Public health departments are asking everybody to wear a mask, especially in indoor settings like a grocery store. But there have been conflicting messages about what kinds of masks to wear, when to use them, and who they help. Hi, I'm Eric Hamilton, a science writer at UW-Madison, and this is Badger Talks. Today we're speaking about the best practices for mask use and how masks can help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Our guest today is Ajay Sethi, Associate Professor of Population Health Sciences. Ajay, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks, Eric. I'm glad to be here. So Ajay, it feels like the uh, guidance on masking has evolved a lot during the pandemic. What do we know right now about who should wear a mask and when? Yeah, so this is a virus, uh, the one that causes COVID. It's a respiratory virus. And so really, um, anybody with a set of lungs, uh, nose, a mouth, uh, really ought to be wearing a mask, especially if you're in a community where there's a lot of community transmission. But there are exceptions. So uh, children less than two years of age uh, shouldn't be wearing a mask because of the risk of suffocation. And anybody with trouble breathing. But, uh, you know, that's, that's really for people who really have trouble breathing. And if you feel like you could, uh, you should at least try the mask out and, and try to get used to wearing it. Okay, so how do we think that masks help prevent the spread of respiratory infections like COVID-19? Yeah, so really anyone with the infection can contaminate the air around them, uh, even when they don't have symptoms. And so the respiratory droplets uh, that are expelled into the air, uh, and this could be just from normal talking, it doesn't have to be screaming or coughing or sneezing or singing, uh, those droplets will uh, you know, be containing a lot of virus. And some of those droplets are very small uh, and they can linger in the air for quite a while. Uh, so the mask really serves as kind of a physical barrier uh, to prevent an infected person from, con from contaminating the air that's around them. Uh, and for someone who doesn't have the infection, wearing a mask prevents them from breathing in uh, or inadvertently inhaling uh, any of that contaminated air. So I think you were getting at this right there. If I do what I'm supposed to do and wear a mask, for example, inside the grocery store, is that really to protect myself or others? Yeah, definitely. So you're doing it to protect uh, both you and others. Uh, studies are showing that up to 40% of people with the infection uh, don't have any symptoms at all. Um, so, you know, that could be you, that could be someone else. Uh, and when you're in an indoor environment like a store, it can be very hard to keep a six foot distance from others, especially when there's sort of barriers, uh, you know, like an area where there's produce, uh, it, can be, it can be hard to navigate that space. And so wearing a mask is really important. Uh, I'll also just say though, that you're not just protecting yourself and the other person in the store, but also your family and that other person's family. And we're all part of a chain of transmission. And so really wearing a mask protects people you see and people you don't actually see. So what kinds of masks should we wear and how can we use them properly? Yeah, so a cloth mask works just fine. Um, you know, it'll keep the respiratory droplets from passing through the fabric. And of course there are different designs, but you really need to wear one that's covering both your nose and your mouth. Um, and the public should not be wearing any medical grade products uh, because those supplies need to be reserved for uh, healthcare workers and first responders. Um, also, you know, medical grade masks are really meant for single use and a cloth mask can be cleaned uh, and then reused. So you really want to have enough of those on hand uh, to last you till uh, laundry day. And so we've talked mostly about indoor spaces, but are there times when we should also be wearing a mask outside? Yeah, again, so when you feel like you can't maintain a six foot distance from others, for example, a sidewalk can quickly become crowded as you turn a corner. Um, also, when you feel like you're gonna have prolonged exposure with others that's face to face, uh, you may think that you can maintain a six foot distance. So for example, like a, a back, backyard barbecue, um, you know, those kinds of environments can be casual and suddenly you think you're, uh, you're confident you can maintain a six foot distance and suddenly you can't. And because you've got that prolonged face-to-face -face exposure, you ought to be wearing a mask at that time uh, as well. And, and I think it's also important to remember that uh, if you don't think you're gonna be running uh, into somebody uh, when you're outdoors, you should at least have a mask with you because you can't always control 
uh, when somebody will uh, be near you and you can't always control that physical distance. Well, Ajay, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you, Eric. For more information, you can go to covid19.impact.wisc.edu or you can email us at covid19update at uc.wisc.edu. I'm Eric Hamilton, and this is Badger Talks.